Have you ever been stuck somewhere with very minimal equipment, trying to get your workout in, but just didn't have the right plan to do it? Well, today I'm gonna to show you a workout that's gonna be beneficial for your golf game, but you can do with just a set of dumbbells and a bench. So how many times have you been either stuck somewhere or you're at your house and you wanna get a workout in, but you just don't have the right equipment? Well, today I'm gonna to show you just with these two dumbbells and this bench, a workout that you can do that's gonna hit all of the main things that we talk about here on 18 Strong for a perfect workout for your golf game. We're gonna do all the major movements, which we talk about a lot, the push, the pull, the lunges, the deadlifts, the hinges, working on your core muscles, a little bit of rotation, all of it with just these two pieces of equipment. It'll be nice to have a couple different weights of dumbbells if you have that, but even so, if you don't, you can get a full blown workout in just like this. So the first one I'm gonna show you is a one arm dumbbell press. So this is gonna be kind of our pushing motion and you're gonna lie on the bench just using one arm at a time. What I want you to do in order to kind of work the body a little differently than your normal dumbbell press or bench press is shift your body off to the side just a little bit. So you can see I'm almost like splitting the bench here and as I lie down, my shoulder, my left shoulder is gonna be on the bench but my right shoulder and my right hip are gonna hang off just a little bit. So if I'm lying like this, I'm really working this left hip as well. I've got the shoulder off and what that does is it creates a little bit of rotational torque going this way where it kinda of wants to pull me off the bench. So I'm gonna stay right here. This hand's on my hip so I'm not grabbing the bench and cheating. And then you're just gonna do your regular press where you're coming down, and this is really creating that tension to try to pull you off the bench, so you have to use your stomach muscles, and then you're pressing back up. Like I said, you're also gonna be using the legs, the hips, so a little bit of everything, and you're just gonna come down nice and controlled and create a little speed on the way up. Then you would just shift to the other side to do the same thing on the left arm. So again, just kind of creating that nice smooth motion always through that full range of motion as you go through your repetitions. Now for the majority of these exercises, we're gonna be doing six to eight repetitions. You can vary the repetitions, but we'll stick to the six to eight range to keep things simple for this. And I'd recommend doing three or four sets. Kind of depends on how much time you have and what you have going on in your schedule. But again, this is not necessarily a workout where we're really working on building huge amounts of strength or cutting a lot of fat. This is a little bit more of a maintenance style workout. You're in the middle of your season or you're just, you're on the road, you're traveling and you wanna make sure you're getting something done and you're not neglecting your regular workout routine. All right, the next one is gonna be more for the hips, the hamstrings, kind of the back of the body. Using the same bench, you're just gonna lie on the ground and we're gonna do a bridging exercise. I'm gonna have you put your heels on the bench here, dig the heels in, lie on the ground, and you're gonna lift your hips all the way up into the air, really squeezing the glutes, and then even pulling the heels into the bench, digging in with the hamstrings, so you're gonna feel a nice big pull in the hamstrings there, and then come back down. So again, you're gonna pull all the way up, get all the way extended first, then dig the hamstrings or dig the heels for just a couple seconds and then come back down. If that feels like it's not too much of a challenge, you can then switch to a one-legged version of this. Just make sure you keep your hips nice and level as you lift. So you're coming up, dig the heel, and then come right back down. You're really gonna feel, as you dig the heel in, you're gonna feel the middle of the hamstring really light up. So you're gonna feel a lot of tension in the back here. If you get any cramping, if possible, I want you to go ahead and try to fight through that cramp a little bit until you get a little stronger and you don't get that. If you're getting cramping on the one-legged exercise, then go ahead and go back to the two-legged ones and just work on really working on good, solid tension before moving on to the single leg. The third exercise is just a dumbbell row using both of the dumbbells, I'm gonna have you flex over almost into kind of a deadlift posture, almost a, you know, like your golf posture, but probably a little bit more bent over. And then you're gonna, gonna just alternate 
which arm is going up and which arm is staying down. I don't want you to rotate your whole trunk like this. I want you to keep your position, keep the shoulder square, concentrate on generating a nice good solid row on one side and then the other side. What you're going to feel here is not just the squeeze behind the shoulders and in the lats, you're also going to feel this working your low back, your hips, even the hamstrings a little bit. So again from the side, kind of getting that nice good hinged posture. Your hands can let them rotate freely. So you're going to see they, they kind of just hang down. As you pull up, I want you to almost pull into a little bit more of a hammer grip position and then just let it fall wherever it wants to fall. We're not too worried about the hand position here at the bottom, but I want that nice good clean row when you get to the top. The fourth exercise is going to be an alternating lunge. Hands at your side, dumbbells in your hands. I just want you to alternate coming forward with one leg, push back, forward with the next leg. A nice smooth motion on the way down, a little power on the way back up. Keeping your trunk nice and tall through this whole motion. So I don't want to see you flexing forward and doing one of these. I want you to look more like this at the bottom of your motion. A little bit more of a nice tall posture. You'll notice the knee can even go a little in front of the toes. Don't be scared of that. Nice stretch on the back leg. And let your body kind of dictate what the distance is there. The other thing I want you to pay attention to on this is watch my front knee as I go down. Make sure you're not letting your knee pinch inward. You want it to stay nice and straight or if anything even just a hair towards the outside. And ideally on this back leg, get it as close to the ground as you can without touching. So you can get all the way down almost a touch, then push back up. When you touch there, that gives you just the slightest little bit of a break, which is okay, but it's not the most optimal way to do it. So again, just nice smooth movements on the way down, push with some explosion on the way back up. Okay, this next one, you will wanna go with a lighter dumbbell or no dumbbell whatsoever. This is simply gonna be kind of a shoulder exercise. You're gonna work on the shoulder blade, the muscles behind the shoulder blades, really working on creating a lot of stability and strength in kind of an outward moving fashion. You're gonna position your hand on a bench, a chair, whatever, and you're just gonna go right here with the dumbbell right down below you. Palm is facing forward, and I'm just gonna raise straight out to the side. So I'm trying to keep the rotation of the thumb out. That's working the rotator cuff, and as I come up, I'm really working on squeezing with the muscles around the shoulder blade to keep that nice good posture, not rotating my trunk here at all, just keeping a nice good posture, squeezing the shoulder and working on that motion going out to the side. Again, if you have any question about the weight, start with no weight whatsoever and then you can work your way up to something a little bit heavier as you go. So we're coming up, you're gonna pause a little bit at the top and then come back nice and slow, and then obviously you're gonna switch around, do that on the other arm as well. All right, the last of the six of these exercises is gonna be a half kneeling trunk rotation. I'm gonna use the dumbbell to create a little more tension in the chest and upper body. It's also gonna help me stay a little more connected because I'm gonna be holding both sides. What I want you to do is get in a half kneeling position, again, nice and tall. We're always working on our posture. Take the dumbbell, or this could be a medicine ball, this could just be you clasping your hands together. You're gonna to hold it straight out in front of you and keep the elbows nice and straight. And then as you rotate, I want you to rotate to the leg that's down. You're gonna rotate as far as you can. Eyes are following the dumbbell. You're gonna go all the way across. You're gonna pause for a second and then you're gonna come back in nice and easy. Only rotating to the same side on this one. And what I want you to focus on here are a couple of things. First, watch my pelvis. My pelvis is actually opening up as I rotate. That's gonna create a little bit of a stretch on this hip here. And it's also gonna force me to really stabilize this front knee. So I don't wanna see this knee rocking in or going out either way. 
So as I rotate, I'm letting my pelvis rotate, my trunk is rotating, I'm feeling a little stretch in my right hip, and this is also working the abdominals and the shoulders a lot because of the weight of the dumbbell. Again, this is only five pounds. 10 pounds gets a little heavy, so I wouldn't go too heavy on this one. Start maybe with nothing or a very light ball on this one just to get the feel. And then obviously you're gonna switch legs and then we're gonna work on going to the opposite side. And feel if there's one side that is a little bit better or worse than the other. That always gives you a little bit of a clue of what you need to work on or where your mobility might be lacking and where you need to work a little bit more. All right, so that's a rotation of six great exercises. If I was writing that out in a program for you, what I would most likely do is first, the one-arm dumbbell press, and then the, the bridges on the bench. Alternate those for your three sets. Once you finish your three sets there, then move on to the next two exercises. Alternate those, the, the dumbbell row, and then also the alternating lunge. Do your three or four sets of those. And then you're gonna move on to the shoulder exercise that we did and the rotation. You'll finish off just with three sets of those. So again, you're gonna do those in supersets. You could run through this whole thing as one big cycle, but normally the way I would do it is, is kind of break them up into supersets. And that way you're kind of hitting different body parts back and forth and getting a little bit of rest there. So that's kind of a basic program. Like I said, just for a good maintenance, make sure you're getting your work in when you're stranded and don't have all the equipment that you normally do at your regular gym. If you need help with anything, with any programming, any questions, let us know below. Give us some comments below. Let us know what you're struggling with. Or if you're looking for a full-blown program, we've got something for you over at 18 Strong. Just go to 18strong.com elite, and you'll find all the information on our elite membership, which has all of our online training programs just for you to help you play better golf. Train hard, practice smart, and play better golf.